For those of you out there that have had the pleasure of working in a traditional darkroom and printing your own photographs would be familiar with the terms dodge and burn. But for those of you who have never had this opportunity, let me quickly explain what these terms are in reference to. The terms dodge and burn reference techniques that we used in a traditional darkroom where a photographer would control the amount of light being projected onto light sensitive photographic paper from an enlarger which carried the negative. Now this would allow the photographer to target areas in their photograph and control the density by reducing or increasing the amount of light that was exposed onto the paper. The dodge and burn tools in Photoshop were designed with this in mind and act very much so in a similar manner, but with all the added benefits that come with working in Photoshop. Now if you navigate to the left hand side of your working space, you'll find the dodge and burn tools located just over halfway down your tools menu. For a shortcut, you can press O on your keyboard in order to bring up these tools. Now, if you click and hold down on your mouse, that'll actually bring up the tools menu, which will allow you to switch between the dodge tool and the burn tool. Now, before we get started actually making any adjustments, it's important to remember that these tools are applied directly to an image layer. And therefore, I like to duplicate my background layer from which I can then work from. So I'm going to go across the layers and I'm just going to drag the background layer onto new layer in order to duplicate it. In the options bar, we have the main controls for the dodge and burn tools. The first one you specifically want to adjust is the brush tip size. Now the size is going to be determined primarily by the size of the area that you actually want to adjust. From there, you actually want to set the hardness value. And in most cases, this is going to be under 25%. You really want a small amount in order to uh, not emphasize the outside outline of your dodge and burn adjustments. So to show you a quick example of what I'm talking about is this, if I just quickly increase the hardness to 100% and we make one quick adjustment to this image, you notice just with one click there, I can see a really coarse outline around my brush. Now, if I was to go back into the brush tip hardness settings and we just reduce that to 0%, what you'll find is that you won't actually be able to see the outside uh, outline of my adjustments, which is essentially what you want when you're burning and dodging. So I'm just gonna go to my history panel and I'm just gonna go back three states. Now, from there, we have the range option. Now, range simply will determine the values in your image that will actually be affected by your adjustments. So you can select from the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So depending on the areas that you're actually going to be adjusting, if they're the shadows, then you want to select the shadows as being your range value. If they're the midtones, the midtones value, etc. Um, from range, we actually have the exposure percentage. Now the exposure percentage will simply allow you to control the amount of dodging and burning that is applied to your image. In most cases, you're going to have a lower percentage, something around 50% or either side of that. Um, but for this example, I'm going to leave it set to 100% just to emphasize the adjustments that I'm making in this video. And finally, we have the protect tones checkbox. Now you want to make sure that this is checked and it should be checked by default, but this will essentially minimize the clipping of your shadows and highlights and also keep the colors from shifting in hues. So that's quite important when you're actually dodging and burning. So if I was to actually make some adjustments to this particular image, so this is an original scan. As you can see, I've got the before and after um, photo restoration here, and it's quite damaged, this particular photo, and it is quite light in density already. So what I'm going to do is essentially just build up its density by burning in certain areas of the image. So by increasing my brush size, I'm going to burn in sort of the tree areas around here, and they're going to be sort of a mid-tone value at the moment, uh, primarily because that's the sort of the density of the overall image. But as I burn them in, you notice that the density is starting to increase and they're starting to look a lot better. And so just by painting with your um, paintbrush, you can work your way around the image and emphasize uh, particular areas by just adding or removing density 
So from that point of view, it is extremely useful. Now, the dodge tool works in very much the same way, except instead of darkening the uh, areas in your image, it'll actually lighten them. So if I want to lighten off some of these areas around the tree here, I just by painting once again, you can lighten those areas off. And whilst these tools are wonderful to work with, I must admit that I rarely use them as I much prefer the associated benefits of working with layer masks instead because you can actually edit and change your adjustments um, throughout your working process. But having said that, one technique that I do use these tools for is when I'm working on older photographs such as this one where I need to pay particular attention to emphasizing or reproducing fine detail that's been lost over the years and for this purpose it works really well. So take the time to play around with these tools but just keep in mind that in Photoshop there are always multiple methods and tools for getting the job done.